Your browser gives you a way of who you are and what your intentions are whenever you access a website. Website owners with, through Antibot or whatever like that can access so much information from your browser by just you running some simple JavaScript on it. Uh, lots of things here, like what fonts you have on your system, lots about the way that your graphics are rendered, your obviously your user agent, your IP location, IP address, time and all of this thing here. So this is Pixel Scan. This is a pretty cool website to check out your browser fingerprint. So we can see right away, you know, it's happy with the fact that I'm using Chrome, no problem there, but I have a location issue. Now we're gonna be talking about this in the case of web scraping and automation. And this is one of the first things that I wanna to touch on. I'm obviously running this behind a VPN because otherwise everyone here would know exactly where I live because that's what this website can tell you. But it's noticing that my location is different and then we just scroll down here, you'll see that we have the time zone from JavaScript, which is run against my browser on my system, has come back as London, but my IP is not matching that. And that's why when I talk about using proxies, especially when you're, uh, when you're running a browser, that you really wanna match the location of your browser and the, uh, the machine that it's running on and the proxy location itself. As we know, IP quality plays a large part in the scraping detection process, so it's vital that you make sure you're using the highest quality proxies to avoid getting blocked. So this video is sponsored by ProxyScrape, friends of the channel and the proxies that I use myself. We have access to high quality, secure, fast, and ethically sourced proxies that cover residential, data center, and mobile with rotating and sticky session options. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use or with unlimited concurrent sessions from countries all over the globe, enabling us to scrape quickly and efficiently. My go-to is either the geo-targeted residential proxies based on the location of the website or your system, or the mobile proxies, as these are the best option for passing anti-bot protection on sites. And with auto-rotation or sticky sessions, along with one using one of the Python packages that I look at all the time, this is a great first step to avoid being blocked. It's still only one line of code to add to your project, and then we can let Proxy Scrape handle the rest. And also, any traffic you purchase is yours to use whenever you need, as it doesn't ever expire. So if this all sounds good to you, go ahead and check out Proxy Scrape at the link in the description below. Okay, let's get on with the video. It's quite easy if you're using multiple browsers to tell that the browser is running on a system based in, for example, the London, and then the IP rotates across the whole world. This is how easy it is for a website to check, and you're gonna get blocked straight away. Other things like fonts, font hash, the way that the canvas is rendered, that's like a 3D thing, tells you what graphics card I'm using. I'm quite up to date here, as you can tell, and on your, also your platform. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about this and how you can kind of get your fingerprint with your browser to look as natural as possible, so we can do our automation and our web scraping that we need. This is another website here, and we can just see here's another test, no automation tool detected, because I'm not running one. Now, a lot of people will go straight away and say, use things like Playwright Stealth or Puppeteer Stealth, but it's interesting and it's important to know how those things actually work and what they do. And uh, for example, this one has not been updated for a long time. Um, it doesn't work that well, but we wanna talk about this in a minute as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I have just a basic Playwright instance running, and I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, page.go to, and we're gonna use the pixel scan website here and I'm going to hit go. This is going to load up pixel scan, pixel scan through Playwright. So I'm still going to have this, you know, this issue here with my location and you can notice there's another thing I'll talk about in a second. We do have the automation framework detected. Now, a lot of things about this are a dead giveaway that we are using Playwright. And the fact is, you know, we haven't changed the screen resolution. Who runs this screen resolution? Nobody. So that's a, that's a straight away thing that we would want to look at changing. Uh, we have a good user agent though, that's fine. Again, we have the IP issue, but we have this automation framework detected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to inspect here. I'm gonna make this full screen or bring this over so we can actually see it. And the one, there's a, there's a couple of different flags, but the one I'm gonna show you is this one called navigator.web driver and it's true you can just about see that there now this is one of the most telltale signs that you are using an automation framework within your browser and almost every well every anti-bot website will check this 
They will check this flag within your dra with JavaScript by basically running this simple command on your console. And if it comes back true, they will block you. Now I'll show you how we're gonna handle this in a minute, but I want you to understand what's happening and you know, what sort of things are working with here. Now I did mention that we had a good user agent, but I just wanna to touch on this um, just quickly that if you run Chrome headless, so you know here I've run headless is false, but if I was to just run this as headless, our user agent would actually say headless Chrome within it. So if you're finding that you're being blocked by a site when you run headless, and when you but you can have access when you run it head full like this or headed, that's because you've got that user agent. And again, user agents are dead easy to spot and block. They'll just block it without even thinking about it. So here's another way. Here's another website that will talk about browser fingerprinting. Uh, it's called browserleaks.com. It's really really useful. There's a lot of different information here, and you know all of this information that it shows you is. It can be gathered by any site and then you know used to profile you to um, you know create that fingerprint and then decide whether you're going to get blocked or not. All of this information you see here is is available. And again, here's the IP. You know, it's telling me we're all we're in Germany. And if you compared the IP location, which is over here, to the system location, which will be over here, dead easy giveaway. So again, when you're using a proxy, if you're struggling match the locations and try it again. So what can we do? So the first thing, you know, we've just used basic standard playwright. Too many giveaways. So what do we want to do? We want to try and use something else. Well, Selenium will do exactly the same thing, same as standard Puppeteer. But what I've been looking at recently is Selenium Base, and it has this UC mode. Now, I've, this is quite an interesting page. So I definitely recommend you come here and look through this, but it is basically the undetected Chrome driver mode and it's based on the undetected Chrome driver uh, library, but it's been tweaked a little bit. I think this is more up to date. And this also claims to be able to answer some captures as well. I've had limited success with that, but it has worked on the very, very basic Cloudflare. Click here if you're human type things. But what I'm most interested in is to have a look and see uh, how it actually works with the website pixel scan that we looked at here where you know my browser is no automation detected but automation with playwright so I'm going to come over to here let's say our URL is equal to and I'm just going to grab that again paste that in and I just need to grab the command because I can't remember it off the top of my head here we go open with reconnect and we'll put that in I don't know why this is on the other side so I'm going to move this over there we go so we can see that this is now much more closely resembling our actual Chrome browser. No automation framework detected. We still have the IP issue, obviously, as I explained, and it's saying we're most likely masking our fingerprint, but I actually had that on the other one as well. But what we have here, good user agent, we have the good screen resolution, it's picking up all the fonts and everything is fine. So this is gonna be a much easier, much better way for us to access sites that do that basic checking. So I'm gonna come over and do inspect, I'll bring you over here. Go to console and we'll do that navigator, navigator.webdriver, false. So because the uh, the the the, uh, the maintainers and the the, the creators of um, the uh, Selenium base or UC uh, undetected Chrome driver, they've covered up all of the basic flags that give it away that you're using some kind of automation tool. Now it's not like a, you know, it's not a golden bullet, it's not gonna solve everything, but if you don't know about this, then you know, you wanna start using something like Selenium Base to make sure you have a better chance of getting through uh, on those websites. Uh, and again, you can mess around with trying the captures as well. One other thing which is kind of interesting, um, I'm gonna scroll down because it talks about it down here, is uh, in this one, for example, the Chrome DevTools variables. So we can see here, uh, this was these are kind of baked into the Chrome driver, which modifies these. And these are, again, an easy way to check to see if you're using some kind of automation library. Now, we don't want to have to change all of these manually, although you could. And, you know, that's how this kind of goes. There's a, I guess it's kind of like arms race in a way, you know, who, who's got the most, who, who blocks who first and who gets past it. And then, you know, everything needs to be kept going and patching and going and patching. Now, if you're at the cutting edge, you're doing that yourself. But if you're not, like, I'm not at all, but you still want to be having, you know, have access to these tools, then 
using something like this is a good option. There are lots of paid, like kind of undetected browsers as well. I don't have a whole load of experience with those, but basically what they do is they just try and stay on top of all the detection methods and then patch them out and make sure you can get through. Now, obviously I'm not condoning, you know, malicious use for things like this, clicking on uh, captures and getting through sites like that. But what I am interested in for me is accessing data that is freely available and on the internet and doing that in an automated fashion, pulling data for analysis and you know all those sorts of reasons. And sometimes you need to use different methods to do so. So I've, this is a good way of doing that if you need to use a browser, for example. Uh, and I, so I'd highly recommend that if you're struggling with, uh, here's the pixel scan report, uh, if you're struggling uh, using Playwright or something like that, that you give Selenium Base a go and try the UC mode. Uh, so far, it's been pretty good for me. I do all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, come and have a look at this and uh, let me know how you get on. If you want to know how I scrape most of the data that I get though, you want to watch this video here, because generally speaking, the browser is the last resort, so try this one.